Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video, I want to talk about this simple little carte de visite that I recently acquired from a local shop. There's a little bit of history attached to this photograph, and I thought it might be interesting to talk about. Carte de visite photographs were made by the millions in the 1800s with the idea that you could easily and affordably give them to family and friends when visiting. This is an albumin print mounted onto a backing card. I bought this for $2.50 at an antique shop, and as you can see, it's got a fold in it, which is unfortunate, but the seller had written on the card that it's from the 1880s, and that is not correct. I can accurately date this photograph to a two-year window of time because of this stamp. The stamp is the reason I decided to buy this in the first place, and I assumed it was a postage stamp, but it's actually a three-cent tax stamp. The stamp features an engraving of George Washington based on the famous portrait by artist Gilbert Stuart. Tax stamps were used for a wide variety of products like liquor, cotton, tobacco, and patent medicine, you know that fake stuff sold in bottles by snake oil salesmen back in the Old West, and a lot of very specific kinds of things like playing cards. The revenues were used to help the U.S. government pay for the high costs of the United States Civil War, which lasted from 1861 to 1865. Photography business boomed during the Civil War because families wanted photos of their boys going off to war and of their heroes coming home from the war. Of course, the U.S. government noticed all the money being made and placed a tax on photography in 1864. There was never a photography stamp, so photographs often hold stamps that were made for playing cards or sometimes the stamp might say for exchange, but in this case it says proprietary. Because all photographs, including albumin prints, were Printed using the sun, photographers said they were being taxed on the use of sunlight. Photographers began complaining about the tax immediately, saying it was unfair because they were already paying higher costs on their materials because of the war. And after two years, they successfully convinced the U.S. government to remove the tax, if you can believe that. That means I can accurately date this photograph to sometime between September 1, 1864 and August 1, 1866. By the way, the war debt wasn't paid off until 1883, according to Wikipedia. Stamps were usually canceled by the photographer, meaning they were marked by hand with a pen or rubber stamped. This one is pretty rare in that it does not appear to be canceled. One source I read said that ordinary photographs like this one would have been taxed at two cents, with more elaborate prints like maybe a hand-colored portrait, uh, that would have been taxed at three cents. Now this is just an ordinary photograph, not hand-colored, but it was still taxed at three cents, as you can see. You'll notice the back of the photograph also holds the photographer's stamp. This image was made by the studio of Evans and Prince in York, Pennsylvania. That studio was founded by a Scottish-born immigrant Fitz James Evans Sr. in 1858 and later joined by Mr. Prince. The number you see handwritten in pencil was the catalog number of the negative. Unfortunately, the Evans and Prince catalog is lost and I have no identification for the subject of this portrait. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning this little bit of photography and tax history. Certainly something I knew nothing about until I researched this photograph. You can see high resolution images of this carte de visite on my blog at iCatShadows.com and there will be a link down below. Thanks for watching everybody.